Let's talk to Palantir. So the whole market's coming back. This is a longtime favorite company. Got crushed on earnings. Trying to come back here the last couple of days, but still definitely standing out as one that is going the opposite way of the broad market the last week. What's up? Uh, well, I think what's going on with Palantir, I, I probably will go back to our original investment thesis. We're, we're the growth equity investors, so we invest in private companies in that kind of one to three year period before they go public. And our thesis on the company was that it, it you know, was a billion dollar SaaS revenue company. It had 80% gross margins, 30% growth rate, um, pro great product stickiness, and the potential to be a real enterprise software player. The risks with the company were that, you know, it had been private for 17 years and it was still not profitable. It was highly dependent on government contracts and it had limited penetration into the into the corporate market. And so I think th what's going on with Palantir, really it's the same risks that we saw two years ago is not yet profitable still heavily dependent on government revenue and they're starting to show some corporate adoption but you know it's still early days in rolling out their products to the corporate market what's taken so long have they just not prioritized it do they not get the message of the eight month long bear market that if you don't make money you're not going to get a pass anymore well i mean palantir is is in a very complicated uh software environment um, when you look at their sales cycle, it's a long cycle process. So they've had great success in the, in the government market and that's taken years to develop. And then they're starting to transition to, to the corporate market. But you know, it, it, if you look at the company, it's, it's more like a consulting company in the first couple of years of a contract and then more like a SaaS company in the next few. So they've had great growth in new customer acquisitions on the corporate side, but for that to really translate into cash flow and revenue, you need to see them, you know, get an installed base within the within the company and then get bigger and bigger contracts that that'll flow to the bottom line more quickly. How come the government loves them so much, but the commercial world, I guess, uh, is not quite as enthusiastic? I mean, I understand they've got some of those clients, but to your point, it sounds like they need to try and grow more into corporate America as opposed to the government spending. Is that just a function of Peter Thiel's political connections? And does that well eventually run dry? I, th I think that was a great way for the company to get started because they they started with some some you know uh, very sophisticated technical implementations that had long sales cycles where where they needed lots of capital investment before you started to see results and you know the government market is is a is a great market to get started in uh, corporate uh, corporate adoption you know they tend to want to see results quicker quicker ROIs quicker paybacks so it's a market that will take longer to develop. Um, but to your point, you know, you're starting to see net dollar retention in the government market slow down. Um, you know, it was 3%, I think, in the last in the last quarter. So, you know, they do need to make that transition, you know, from the from the government sector to the corporate commercial sector. Um, and, and that's happening. I mean, they had a uh, 250% uh, customer count increase in the in the corporate market in the last quarter. They grew customer base from 34 to 119. So, so it's starting, but like I said, it, it takes time to, to fully roll out.